Um, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the talk today. I know this is the last minute organization, and um, I think I'm maybe the only electrical and computer engineer for the conference. Um, so I was trained in electrical and computer engineering, and I stepped into biomedical engineering since 2006. And uh, this project was supported by NIH, um, Proteomic Center, uh, NHLBI, which um, they founded seven proteomic centers since 2010 and 2015. So this was one of the latest results we had um, related with the proteomics project. Um, so today we're going to present our um, recent results on how can we integratively um, use computational and experimental approach to establish a post MI knowledge um, map. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so everybody knows myocardial infarction is um, a leading cause of um, deaths worldwide, and every year uh, over 1 million U.S. people are diagnosed with um, myocardial infarction. And right now, um, post MI, um, the CHF <coughs> has very high <coughs> mortality rate. And the reason of that is a lack of early diagnostic indicator and effective uh, therapeutic strategies. And um, another thing I want to mention is um, as an electrical and a computer engineer, we're using different view angles than um, medical scientists and uh, clinical researchers. Um, so what we done is we know computer. So we want to include or integrate computer to biomedical research. So to understand LVG modeling, we identified two basic problems to answer. The first one is which, which key factors will be involved in post MI remodeling? And if we identify these key, key factors, what will be the interactions and how can we quantify these interactions? Okay, so the goal of this study is to establish a framework that integrates <laughs> known data and knowledge and allow us to identify potential biomarkers and generate novel hypothesis. And our hypothesis for this study is the impact of an MI-associated protein will be ranked by a combination of their structure and connection properties in a protein-protein interaction network. Okay. So if you search PubMed, there are over, over two million articles related with myocardial infarction and cardiovascular disease. So I think through my whole life, I cannot read two million articles for sure. Okay, but computer can read it. Okay, and also if you search other open databases like protein-protein interaction database or the Uniprot, which is like a um, dictionary of all protein structure, protein function, and related interactions. So huge information were embedded in these databases then how can we deal with it? So I give you some examples here. If you search myocardial infarction in PubMed, you will get about 200K abstracts or, or articles, okay? So even not 2 million, 200K, I think it will take my whole life, okay? I cannot read all of these. Even I recruit all my PhD students and postdocs to read everybody, read one paper per day. I don't think I can finish it. Okay, and um, this number is increasing and increasing every year, okay? Uh, <coughs> besides this, if we search other public database, like the OMEM database, which includes all the inheritable genes related with a specific disease, we search OMEM database um, for myocardial infarction, and we found about 558 genes related with myocardial infarction, okay? And also, this is only one of the database. If you search NH, um, NCBI protein database, gene database related with myocardial infarction, you will find more and more information about it. And there is going to be a problem. As these database agree with each other? And unfortunately, it's not. For gene database, uh, OMEM database, string database, and all of these databases, they have some common factors, but they have other things disagree with each other. Then what we should do? Besides this, if we know the 
genes or proteins related with myocardial infarction. But the further question we need to answer is, what are the functions of these genes and proteins? So currently, the known bioinformatics tools include David, which was um, developed by uh, NCBI 10 years ago. And um, it was the, one of the most commonly used bioinformatics um, tools right now. And besides this, we also need to look at Balcata and the KEGG pathways because David just gave us the um, gene ontology term, but Balcata and KEGG pathway database will give us specific pathway function. Okay. So the challenge right now is how can we extract useful information with this huge amount of information? But manually integration or retrieving is definitely not a solution to us. Okay. And the way we propose is we're going to build a framework to automatically read these abstracts. We cannot have access to all of these over 2 million or 200K um, pu public data of the articles, but we have the access of abstracts of all these publications through PubMed. Okay. Um, so the solution is we're going to look at the database including molecular level, cellular level, tissue level, and organ level. And then we're going to use data mining, tax mining, and integrate all of these databases, public information together to build a knowledge map for myocardial infarction. So the first step for us is to establish knowledge map of MR response at molecular and cellular level, cellular level using protein-protein interaction. We developed a user-friendly uh, graphical user interface using um, programming language. So the input of this interface is going to be the disease MI. And then the supporting database, including OMAM, PubMed, and protein-protein interaction database, Uniproud database. Okay, when we search all of these public database, we'll extract disease-related genes. If we have the input of MI, we'll extract the uh, related genes related the genes related with MI, and then we will ask computer to read all the abstract using tax mining method to search seed proteins. And after we have the seed proteins, we'll search the protein protein interaction database to find the interactive proteins related with the seed proteins, and then we'll identify or we'll match all the official name of these proteins to make sure there is no duplicates no alias um, in our program, okay? After we have these interactive protein list, we will generate a network. And sh <coughs> to identify whether this network is going to have a specific function or have some property, we'll compare our network with randomly generated over 10,000 random networks to look at the statistic significance. And then after that, we confirm that we build a protein-protein interaction net network specifically for myocardial infarction, okay? And then we'll predict the protein change based on this network and analyze the functions of these proteins. Um, so that's the overall method. So um, with all of this um, computer-assisted um, programming, we have OMIM, PubMed gene as the input, and then altogether we found 658 genes, and from PubMed protein database, we have found 2,000 over uh, 2,300 protein sequences, and then we match all of these protein gene sequences to have the official name, and then this will, be, this will give us about 709 human proteins, and all of these 709 proteins were reviewed manually by Uniprot to claim they have myocardial, uh, they are related with myocardial infarction. Okay. And um, I'm not going to start with all of the 700 proteins because even Uniprot give you the review information, it's not professional review. And I have to claim this, the reason is because they recruit people to read it, but not everybody is going to be related with myocardial infarction related with clinical or biological research. I heard that they may have some high school student to glance at it. Okay, so we, we think it's a good reasonable reading, but we still need to verify it. So among the 708 um, proteins, we selected 38 proteins, and 22 of the 38 
were um, MI related proteins from OMEM database. 16 other seed proteins were related with other database and confirmed with GeneRef and PubMed. The verification of all these 38 proteins was all these 38 proteins were associated with MI in at least three independent publications. If they are from the same, same group, no, it's not independent. We have to look at different journals and different study groups to confirm it. Okay, <clears throat> and then we look at the interactions and the locations of these 38 proteins. We can see that among the 38, 22 were, relate, were located at um, the extracellular matrix, and then others were not located in ECM. And also, these 38 proteins will give us all their interactive proteins. These seed proteins were, in green and gr uh, uh, were shown in green, and all of these red proteins <laughs> were the interactive proteins with these 38 proteins. Altogether, we have 616 proteins, and the interactions will be over 4,000. Though they are still huge numbers, but comparing with over 14,000 human proteins, this is a significant reduction of the um, protein number because we started with the whole human protein database and then pinned down to about 616 proteins, okay? And then we look at the structure pro property of this protein-protein interaction network. Among these um, 616 proteins, we have 70 proteins had only one or two edges, and 121 had three to five edges, and um, um, 422 had more than five edges, okay? The reason we wanna show this one is because when we look at the uh, distribution of the degree, when we say degree, it's going to be how many connections one pr a protein is gonna have. So this degree follows um, a parallel distribution, which means that this is a scale-free network. I know this skill-free network sounds foreign to you, but I'm gonna show you quickly what does that mean, okay? And then we compare with um, 10,000 randomly generated proteins. The way we, we generate the random protein is going to be, we'll select um, 38 seed, seed proteins and uh, from all of the home proteins, which is about 14,969. Uh, 14, proteins, and then we use the same number of nodes and edge to generate the random protein. We, altogether, we, uh, we generate over 10,000 random protein. And then we check the structure property, which, re, re, uh, which is going to be calculated based on the betweenness, closeness, and, um, cluster coefficient, degree centrality, and the centricity. All of these words is going to look at how close two proteins will be, and then how close can we classify or cluster a group of, group of proteins together based on their structure property. Okay, so what do we do is, among these, um, all of these random networks, we compared with our, um, with our um, MI-specific protein interaction network, the MI network will give us higher average values of closeness, clustering coefficient, and uh, eccentricity, and lower average of betweenness. This indicates that if they are all linked together, which is a school-free network and strongly, strongly connected to each other, means their functions are more closely related with each other. So the structure property just confirm first, the MI specific protein network is not a random network. Secondly, their functions should be closely related with each other based on their proteins, okay? Um, then we look at how can we ana analyze the protein functions? The first thing we do is we look at the location of these proteins. When we check the location of all these 616 Pre, uh, certain proteins, we found most of them are located in the extracellular region of the plasma membrane, okay? Which means these proteins may trigger complicated functions. And when we check that MMP9, uh, TIMP1, TGF-beta are all of these up, uh, upstream proteins, okay? Um, so next thing is, after we build this network, right now we have 
613 proteins from over about 15,000 human proteins, and which we confirm these 613 proteins are related with MI, and they might have specif specific functions. So what we do is we use computer again to extract protein levels post-MI from PubMed abstract. So PubMed abstract, if they have protein name and if they have the concentration, either up or down will extract as computer to read the abstract. So we use a testing set. We read all the PubMed abstract for human um, from January 2005 until May 31st, 2013, which, will, which gave us 4,326 abstracts. And with these over 4,000 abstracts, we look at all the key sentences and proteins and the protein concentrations. Um, and then we can label all of these proteins, whether they are up or down regulated. Unfortunately, only a very, very small number of proteins were quantified during this period of time because we use a sampling abstract from uh, 2005 to 2013, okay? And then based on the confirmed up-down regulation of the, uh, some of the proteins, we would like to use the algorithm to predict the protein progression, okay? So what we do is we predicted 14 proteins which will be up-regulated post-myocardial infarction. Remember, the sample data set, sample abstract was from 2003 to 2005 to 2013. So after we do the prediction, we have confirmed that among these 14 proteins, 11 of them really have the confirmation of upregulation post myocardial infarction, which was we extract all the protein concentrations since um, 1991 to 2015. Okay, and um, this confirmation were either for mice or human. The reason is because we started with human data, so very few results were related with, were reported for human protein um, levels. And you may, you may ask why you have that, um, of course, like collagen level for human um, post my must be increased, right? But we didn't show that, so the reason is we only look at the serum and, um, um, uh, uh, the experiment from blood. So that's the reason we didn't show collagen level here. Um, okay, after we generate this protein-protein interaction network for myocardial infarction, the second step we need to do is, what is going to be the biological process related with this elevated or down-regulated uh, expressions? And what will be the specific pathways uh, represented by this um, uh, by these proteins. So as I said, because David is a very common bioinformatics tool, uh, bi bioinformatics tool. So we um, use David first to look at what will be the gene ontology biological process related with these um, proteins. So altogether, there were 993 enriched gene ontology biological process which is not good because we start with only 613 proteins and then the biological process gave us more numbers than the proteins, right? But this is a very, very common problem for David because David, one protein will give you multiple, bio, may involved in multiple biological processes, okay? So <clears throat> we wanna see with all of these biological process, we only need to have the most specific information of it. So we check the ancestor terms, offspring score, goal proportion, and the information content. These are all the evaluation of um, the gene oncology terms. Okay. Um, so after that, based on this um, information content, we found the most specific pathways. You can see this, the higher score information content have will have give us more specific functions. So when we look at, when we check it, we can see it's related with acute inflammatory response, interleukin regulation of interleukin 6, 12 biosynthetic process, and also the um, inf inflammatory response wound healing. Okay, so all of the information gave us some hints. These processes were really related with MI response. 
Okay, and then we look at how can we cluster the pathways together. So the way we do that is if there are two pathways and if these two pathways share same proteins, we assume these pathways will have a similar function. The more proteins shared in the two pathways, the more similar these two pathways will be. So we look at the kappa score of two pathways. Okay, and then based on the kappa score, we look at the, we cluster the pathways together. So you can see with this diagonal, the, um, each row and each column is going to represent the same pathway. So like the first row, first column will be the same pathway. And then when we look at the higher level, they are correlated or they are similar to each other, will be represented as a red color. And then the less similarity they have will be like, white or ye light yellow color. And when we check this, you can see these pathways were clustered in several different regions. The first one is acute MI pathway block. And this one will be um, signaling pathway, kind of signaling pathway, KP1, KP2, and here will be signaling pathway. Inflammatory response, we have, uh, we have two um, related uh, blocks. And then LV remodeling, we have uh, hypoxia pathway, and then we have angiogenesis blocks. Okay, so we have identified all of these pathways using the KEGG pathway database, and then we cl cluster the similar pathways together. We can see very clearly that this will be one module, this might be another module, this might be the third module, and here will be the fourth module. Okay, and so based on, from all the proteins, we pin down to 613 proteins, and then we look at their pathways, we cluster their pathways together to give us different modules, and then we establish the knowledge map. So from the knowledge map, we can see all of the proteins were shown here, and their related pathway functions will be represented here. We have acute MI, and then we have signaling pathways, canis pass, acute, uh, pathways, and hypoxia pathway, inflammatory response, uh, uh, response, and also finally we have the LV remodeling and angiogenesis pathways. So by this way, we claim we have an integration of computational and the experimental method together to build a relationship between the molecules related with MI and their specific functions. Okay, of course this research result can be applied to other like cancer research. We have applied to breast cancer, to Eisenheimer disease, and then we can build the knowledge map to link the molecular level expression to specific functions. Um, and um, this study is the uh, first integrated inte uh, investigation for left ventricular scar formation post MI using the combined integrative method. And of course, there are a long way for us to go for sure because right now, um, when we do the integration, we only focus on MI and we need to integrate other hypertension study and uh, maybe diabetes study in the future together to have a complete map for cardiovascular disease. And um, this is my group, and I would like to thank NHLBI and NIH for all my uh, studies during the past five years. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. <laughs>